Chapter 14, A Revelation I wake up with wax paper stuck to my cheek. I fell asleep at the kitchen table last night after testing a glazen recipe. It's less than a week until the fish fry, and I've still got no clue what I'm going to do. And now I'm waking up to one less day, and the birds are tweeting outside like this is a Disney movie. I had that dream again, the one where I can walk. I wake up in my bed at home, but home is back in my pink room in Nashville. And instead of reaching out for my wheelchair like I always do, I sit up and swing my legs over the side of the bed instead. Just like that, I am up. Mom is yelling from the living room to get a move on, or we'll be late. And so I run down the hall into the bathroom, and this is the beauty of it all. I take a shower. I stand under the water and let it fall all down me and swirl around my toes. I look down at my legs, and they're strong like with actual muscles, and my kneecaps don't stick out like knots on a tree. This is a dream because, hello, country music is not my thing, because I can hear Carrie Underwood singing in the background. And then, when I come out, Mom is in the kitchen sipping coffee by the stove, and her hair is long again, and when I go to hug her, I can look right in her eyes because I am almost as tall. I am almost as tall. I hate that dream. Because most times the wheelchair just mildly sucks, but after those nights, it sucks big time. Mom walks in while I'm peeling the wax paper off my face. There you are. I can't believe you slept in here. Yeah. She takes in the jars of canned goods, the half stick of butter, the empty carton of eggs, and baking so soda spilled down the side of the microwave. Did you figure it out? Well, I say rubbing the crusties out of my eyes. It's not custard, or caramel, or almond, or strawberry, or chocolate, or licorice. Licorice? I'm ruling nothing out. I'm not sure process of elimination is your best bet here, Elle. Mom sweeps a big pile of eggshells into the trash under the sink. If you have a better idea, let me know. Hey, don't get sassy with me now. You want me to help you with a bath? No, the dream is still too real. I'm going to lie down for a little bit. All right. We've got church at 10, though, and you know your meemaw. In church, I try a different strategy. Dear God, please help me find the perfect pie, the one that's the most me, or at least give me a hint. And also, I know you saw that dream last night, because according to Genesis, you know just about everything. I want you to know that I'm not going to ask for that, okay? I'm not going to ask for some sort of miracle. But if I were going to ask for a miracle, would you please help Grandpa? I don't mind the CP so much most of the time, but I think the stuff with Grandpa is driving him a little crazy, or crazier, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I mean, I think he's tired of being confused, and I think maybe that might be worse than not walking. So I guess I'm asking, could you please make him better, and also help me with the pie? Amen. I don't know if it was the prayer or what, but when the, we bow our heads for the benediction, the blessing at the end of the service, I get an idea. You want me to rinse these for you? It's the day of the fish fry, and I've just put the pie in the oven. If this one isn't perfect, there won't be any time for a redo. Coralie is sitting on the kitchen table, smack on top with her legs crossed, like she's about to meditate. No, stay where you are. The kitchen is tiny enough as it is, and I need the space. It's also a thousand degrees in here, so I lean over her and open the window. You think Yellow Rose of Texas is a bad thing to sing in Oklahoma? Coralie's been practicing for a new pageant in July. I shrug. Four months in the state isn't long enough to give me an opinion. Oh well, I don't care. I love me some Willie Nelson, she says, and then hops down. I'm off to get changed. See you for a victory lap. She's still humming when she passes Meemaw on her way out the door. Well, this place has never smelled so good in my life. What do you got in there? A slice of heaven? Meemaw tries to peek into the oven, but I block her. No, uh-uh. You've got to wait for the big reveal like everybody else. All right, all right, Miss Thing. But as soon as that's out of the oven, you've got to go get yourself down to the bedroom. Your mom sent me to tell you it's time to shower and change. I stop to look at Meemaw. She's like summer come early with her white capris and red and white checkered shirt. You look like a picnic table. Well, thanks a lot. She fans herself with a big straw hat. I meant that in a good way. This is how I always remember her best, summer Mima, drinking tea out on the porch, frying up okra, planting bulbs in the flower beds, and chasing off the rabbits with water from the hose. 
our last night every August. I'd make Mom sleep on the couch so I could fall asleep holding Meemaw's hand. I never wanted to leave. And then it hits me as I roll on back to the bedroom. I might never have to.